experience. So my video today is actually, you know, what you need to know to run an online business in Nigeria. Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Peter. Some of my friends call me Dr. Piro. I'm a content creator and medical doctor working currently in Nigeria. On this channel, I do a little bit of academics and medical lifestyle. And um, if you are new on this channel, please subscribe and watch out for, you know, more of our content. I'm going to talk about my experience as someone who has run an online business in Nigeria for about two years, what you should be aware of and what you should like prepare your mind towards if you are running a business in Nigeria. Um, and I'm not going to be talking only from my experience, I'm going to be talking from, also from this book, Successful Nigerian Entrepreneurs and How They Started. Um, it's a story about 12 Nigerian, 12 of the biggest Nigerian brands and you know their background stories. If you're an entrepreneur, you definitely read. And if you don't read, please start reading. You have heard of books like, you know, um, Think and Grow Rich, um, Richest Man in Babylon, The Hard Things About Hard Things, uh, Great books on entrepreneurship, books on business, you know, um, Think and Grow Rich, Secret of the Millionaire Man. You should have been reading books like that. But those books are actually non-Nigerian books. And it's good that you know the peculiarities of the society where you live. And this book, this book, Successful Nigerian Brands, it gives a unique perspective because it is actually written from the standpoint of the Nigerian society. So you get to know exactly, you know, what, where you are working on. Let me tell you some of the peculiarities that I'm sure you already know. I mean, greater than 200 million in population. This is actually the largest black nation on earth. So it's a big market for every product you want to sell, which is, I mean, which is a very good market. However, you need to also know that Nigeria has the third largest population of people living below the poverty line which is like one dollar a day so the highest population of people living the third highest population of people living below one dollar a day are, are, are living in nigeria so when you see ads like when you run ads for example as an entrepreneur like maybe buy one and get two free it doesn't it doesn't mean people don't want to buy your product it just means that they cannot afford your product and all your promotions actually go you know don't will not turn out to sales and stuff like that so that is where and then you should be knowing that nigerians have <laughs> baseline cynicism we don't believe what you I mean by an online business in this video me i mean a business in which the internet is the primary source of the interaction between you and your clients or your customers so just for context now my experience is quite not that extensive but i think you can learn one or two things from it um, i started teaching online about two years ago i started teaching during um I started teaching before lockdown, but during lockdown online, I became um, sort of an internet teacher, um, coaching um, high school students, secondary school students going into the university. And then I started selling online courses. And that is where I'm going to be speaking from, running an online business. So if you do a little bit of marketing, sales, interaction, or services online, then I think you can relate a lot with, um, with this. Now, the first point I think you need to know as a Nigerian running an online business is you need to clearly define your target population. And what do I mean by this? You need to clearly define your target population. Let me give you an idea of what I mean. You need to know the age range of people you are targeting. You need to know the gender you are targeting. You need to know the location of where those kind of people are targeting. Their average or their general income idea. Like what are they earning? Are you so you need to, and then the educational, the educational side. So your demographics need to be very clear on the kind of people you are targeting. For example, on my YouTube channel, um, my um, infographics, my information, my um, dashboard says um, majority, 80% of my viewers are between the ages of 15 and 45. So whatever I'm doing will be targeted towards those people because those are the kind of people that I appeal to. Now, when I was selling courses online, my target population was were between the ages of 14 and 22. So these are the people that I was working with. You need to, the reason why is because so you can, you can, your products can be well tailored to your market so that you can actually get sales at the end of the day. So you need to clearly define your target population. You need to do so because it's going, it's going to help you in everything in your business, your, your product design, what you are doing and exactly what like, you, it's going to help you at that. It's going to help you at your price point. So you know, okay, my population can afford it or I'm doing this for a population that can afford it. If you cannot afford my product, then you are not within my target population. So you begin to, the reason why is because in entrepreneurship, you think maybe when you, you have a great product and you just want to throw it around all the world so that everybody gets to buy. That is not an effective, it looks like a good idea, but it's counterproductive. The larger your net does not mean the larger your catch. It's better you make a small net that you're sure that always catches. So that is a better idea rather than just, you know, go as far as you 
you can go but the next point i'm going to be talking about on this channel is you need to if you are a young nigerian entrepreneur a startup <laughs> you need to have a reason why you do what you do you know because um simon sinek said start with why have a clear reason have um have have a just cause for why you are starting your business why are you starting your business you're not starting your business to make profit profit is the side is the byproduct is the side effect of your business your business is supposed to make okay for example if it, i do education so my business is supposed to make transition from high school secondary school to the university as smooth and seamless as possible remove fear remove failure increase productivity increase pass rates and increase understanding of the knowledge those students are getting so i do that for the arts the science and commercial students to help them get through their ssc exams their um, utme exams and their post utme exams so that they can get into the school of their choice with a grade of their choice that is my just cause and i think it's justified because when i was in the shoes when i was as that young i wish i had someone like me now who would have led me you know through the landmines that exist in those areas so have a why have a just cause why you are doing your business and when you have a just cause then profits can be a side product the reason why is because entrepreneurship startups in all societies will test your metal it will test the substance you are made up of you are going to have challenges i guarantee that you are going to have challenges let me tell you one of the challenges i had when i was running a startup one of my challenges was power electricity and um, i was living in an area where when it rains you will not have lights for two weeks at least and it was in the peak of the rainy season that was the peak of my production and at the time i was working with um, two laptops and about three phones and you know in, in, in trying to improvise power supply electricity at some point my generator blew all the chargers of all my phones and my laptop and it was a very high cost that I did not plan for so you need to know that there will be challenges and if you don't have a cost so just to inspire you and to remind you why you are doing this you are likely going to drop the button at some particular so when you define your target audience you have a strong reason the next thing i'm going to say is you need to be as good as you say you are if you are giving a product that's supposed to provide a product a that's supposed, that's supposed to produce result b you need to be extra extra sure that your product is actually going to give result b the reason why is because as a startup your advertisement your sponsored ads will not mean much to people because you cannot sustain enough advertisement like the big um agencies the big companies your competitors you cannot sustain their level of publicity so you rely on the fact that every single customer you meet should be able to get true value and take you on their head as so that they market you free of charge for themselves and i guarantee you from the depth of my heart that referrals are way better than sponsored ads if someone tells you that they used um, a product and give them an awesome result and you are close to that person it, bring, it, it breaks all statistics it breaks all logic you would rather go with a referral from someone you know rather than from an ad you just saw randomly online so make sure your product gives the results you said it's going to give and then your customers will become your greatest marketers themselves the next thing i'm going to talk about is you need to learn marketing marketing see you know back in the day in the classical era of entrepreneurship in books like think and Rich, they tell you when you make a better mouse trap the whole world will beat you know a track to your path a path to your house even if you are living in the forest that is true but that is no longer completely true even if you have a better product you need to learn how to market your product so that you can appeal to people you need to know how people make decisions knowing that and this is not in ex in any way exploring people's psychology but people are more emotional in the decisions they make so you need to be able to appeal to people that's why it's so important for you to know the demographic of your initial customers learn marketing if you have to read books on them read books on them read brian tracy's book read um read all the books on marketing you can get your hands on because it is important that when you have that great product that great cream that great haircut that great um course you'll be able to market it to the right people such that your just cause can actually come to fruition Lastly, entrepreneurship in Nigeria is very challenging. You are going to need investors that will not come to fruition. You are going to need startup capital. You are going to need a lot of funding. You are going to meet a lot of challenges, power, um, and unexpected challenges like COVID and things like things that would come from you know your, it will hit you from the blind spot. When you think you have all the variables arranged, it's going to hit you. But nonetheless, nonetheless, 
it will test you but i can assure you this for every single business you you on that um, venture you take you're going to learn a lot not the, your first product might not be your greatest product you might not make the greatest sale you might not you know become a billionaire from your first um product but you will become a better person a better marketer a better product designer a better creative for your next venture and onwards and onwards until you hit that point that you you know you want to get to so be aware that you are going to have challenges and then have a good um, mechanism set in place when those kind of challenges. I'm going to round up this video with something I learned from Jordan Peterson, the cost of the creative, the cost of the creative. The cost of the creative says it plagues entrepreneurs, creative artists, even scientists of all caliber where you have one dream that consumes you, that makes you not go to sleep, that makes you go to sleep late and wake up early and stuff like that essentially what it means to be a startup to be an entrepreneur when you have that i want you to nurse it i want you to nurture it i want you to develop it i want you to research on it i want you to prepare it but as you do that i also want you to know that it's going to be difficult being a being a creative it's, it's, it's difficult creativity is not that common and if you want to be creative you don't just have to be artistic and then be doing your paintings or writing your code you also have to learn social skills you need to learn how to communicate how to market your product and i'm not saying this in a in a manipulative way i'm saying it as a true channel in which things go from the creative to the marketers to the consumers and if you understand this and as a startup you need to be able to learn how to do all this at least in the early part of your business until you hit that threshold until you cross cross that pit of death as you call it in an entrepreneurship one-on-one -on -one class so that when you cross it you can now af afford to hire your graphic designers your publicity people your social media handlers your marketers your hr but prior to that time you need to be able to learn the whole chain such that you can wear all those hats of the creative, of the marketer, of the communicator, of the investor, of the resource person until you get to that point. Maybe in the next video, we'll talk about a few more details of what it really means to run an online business. And then maybe then we can talk about some of the brands like Channels TV, like Zaron and Health Plus and the rest of the others. Thank you very much for watching. Please, if you are new on this channel, like and subscribe. See you.